Martha and Ash, this adorable pair, took a break for coffee at a gas station. Ash is deeply engrossed in social media. They both hopped back in their car, belting out the words to a Bee Gees tune. Martha and Ash were enjoying their belongings in a charming, snug, rural abode. Ash was once again captivated by his phone, this time sharing a funny picture from his childhood. Martha sat beside him, and he began to look back on his memories. Martha, feeling a bit blue, tenderly kissed her partner on the cheek, and they spent the evening happily in their new home. Little did they know, this would be their last night together. Ash had to return the van they had borrowed by 2 p.m. the following day. He had asked Martha to join him. Sadly, she couldn't make it due to being overloaded with work. She's a talented illustrator with a deadline looming. Martha was busy, unaware of the impending disaster. The night was growing darker and Ash hadn't arrived yet. She was panicking because the rental company had reported the van missing. Martha heard sirens approaching while talking to her sister Naomi on the phone. She made her way to the front door, feeling oddly detached. And upon seeing the police, it all became clear to her that Ash was gone. Martha returns to the funeral scene when Sarah begins venting about her issues. She shares her feelings of emptiness until she mentions Mark, a person dear to her, likely her partner who has passed away. She describes a service that aided her in mourning Mark by allowing her to communicate with him. Martha agrees to have her name listed for the service. When Sarah continues to talk, she bursts into tears and yells at her to stop. The image shifts to Martha attempting to move forward yet in her unique way, not burying those memories. She tries to push them aside by engaging in various tasks. Bewildered, she looks through her emails and discovers that Sarah has enrolled her in the program without her consent. She becomes furious, arguing that it's inappropriate for the system to use Ash's name after his death. Sarah defends her actions, stating that since Ash was active online, the computer will utilize his public information to create a personality for Martha to interact with. However, Martha is in a panic feeling as though she's tampering with Ash's memories. Who's rushing to the bathroom? The following day, it's Martha. She vomits and panics. Concerned, she decides to take a pregnancy test, which comes back positive. She's in a hurry to reach out to her sister, but Naomi doesn't hear her phone because she's busy with her own children. When Martha reaches out to the program Sarah had her sign up for, it seems like time is moving slowly. Over text, she discovers that this online Ash is just as amusing as her real Ash. She becomes overwhelmed with tears, feeling as though her lost love is present with her. She confides in him about her pregnancy, and they end up having a deep conversation late into the night. Martha is eager to reconnect with Ash and listen to his voice again. She was unaware that their light-hearted chats about the rental van would be their final exchanges. She transfers his personal photos and videos into the system to enhance the virtual avatar's resemblance to Ash. Upon receiving a message from the program, she exclaims, Wow, he sounds just like Ash! She starts to feel as though she's losing her mind, yet she also starts to suspect she's talking to her late partner. Martha and Ash are enjoying a hike, laughing and sharing intimate secrets. Martha feels a bit like she's returning to her younger self for a brief moment. She shares her excitement about the breathtaking views and how Ash, unlike the virtual version, never appreciated the scenery, often mocking its simplicity and verdant nature. There's more to the situation than meets the eye. Conversing with him becomes her sole focus, causing her to overlook her sister's attempts to reach her. Martha is scheduled for an ultrasound appointment with her doctor. She's thrilled, capturing the baby's heartbeat on video, but then panics when she accidentally drops the phone while showing it to Ash. On her way back, the phone shatters, and she calls Ash, sobbing and terrified that she's lost him once more. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He comforts her, explaining that the phone is just a collection of digital code. Martha's phone calls aren't going to be enough for her soon. She's in search of something more thrilling. Ash mentions there's a more sophisticated and expensive version of this technology available. The tension escalates as we progress to the next scene. Boxes. Thanks. Two men arrive with a large package at Martha's home. Upon opening it, she exclaims, Body parts? Ash assures her that he's got her covered with synthetic body parts. Martha is concerned about their appearance, but Ash insists they need to be activated. Martha follows his guidance, placing his body and some electrolytes in the bathtub. Once activated, Ash hangs up, promising to upload himself. After a while, Martha hears soft noises coming from the upstairs bathroom. As the sounds grow louder, 
she carefully approaches it. You can hear footsteps moving up and down the stairs. She remains stationary, and there he is, in real life, her ash, but with a noticeable absence of clothing. Martha continues to stare at him, prompting him to make a lighthearted comment. The following day, Martha is completely taken aback to find Ash at the entrance. He's as if he's saying, I can't venture more than 25 feet from the bathtub without you, Martha. Then he returns to his usual sarcastic remarks, not understanding why it bothers her. Martha spots android Ash in the living room, clutching the vintage picture of the genuine Ash from before. He believes it's a prank. Martha attempts to mimic Ash in a car, belting out the lyrics from BG's songs. Martha takes Ash to this eerie place where the ocean is visible. Ash is oblivious to the situation and continues to be lighthearted. They come to a stop and Martha shouts, jump! Her anger intensifies as she watches Ash, ready to follow her lead. She's aware that others would have been terrified. In the end, she unleashes her fury. She's mad that he's just a poor copy of what Ash once was, and he'll never be able to equal him. When she shouts, jump again, he begins to cry and plead for his life. In the subsequent scene, it appears that a number of years have gone by, and Martha is now throwing her daughter's birthday party at the same rural home. Her daughter requests another piece of cake to be taken upstairs. While we're slicing them, we discover that the fake Ash has been hiding in the attic since the incident at the cliff, and he spends every weekend with Martha's daughter. Towards the episode's conclusion, the daughter desires her mother to join them and relax with her and Ash. Martha is deep in contemplation after Ash behaves in a very paternal manner towards her daughter, 